Thanks so much uh, for coming out. We have a, a different show here every last Thursday of the month, so even if you're here for a friend, come out next time. We'll have a totally different show. Uh, your first comedian, he's new to stand-up comedy. This is his second time on the stand-up comedy stage. We think he has promise. We think you're going to like him. Please give him your love. Mike Platt. Yeah. Mike Platt is in the house. Thank you. You're going to notice tonight that there's something to be said for experience. A lot of these guys will very subtly look over their shoulder, you know, check on their drink and their nose. I'm going to hold mine up here in front of me. <laughs> I need, when you're my age, you need all the help that you can get to read what you've written. So bear with me. Some of you may know that I've been in the insurance business for more than 30 years, 33 to be exact. When I took the job, I didn't realize that I was getting a life sentence. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that you didn't like that. But you know, <laughs> if I shot the recruiter, I'd have done 30 years and I'd been a free man for the last three and a half. <laughs> that was better. I'm glad that you enjoyed that one. And I thank you for being with us tonight. You know, I really need quadrifocals to see what I put down here. You might be interested to know here in the, in the audience tonight is my daughter. Now, she works for me in my office. Contrary to popular belief, I do not work for her, <laughs> although she thinks that I probably do. Between her having quit 947 times, she's been there for three years, and my having fired her, for 946 times. We have a mutual agreement. Tomorrow we'll probably be back to work. <laughs> you know, it's always interesting to watch the expressions on people's faces when you know what's going on and they don't. I had come back in off the street one day and Robin said to me, you know, Tom Smith was in here to pay a premium. That man has a deep voice. And I said, yeah, you know, I knew Tom Smith when he was a she. You think he's got a deep voice now? <laughs> yeah, should have heard what it was like then. All right, I'm supposed to be subtle about this. I guess I better hold him over there, huh? I am forever in trouble. The other day, I went down to Subway, and I went to buy a sandwich. And after I got to the cashier, the man looked at me and he said, you know, your card has been declined? Really quietly, he said that. And I looked and there in my hand was my Blue Cross Blue Shield card. <laughs> it doesn't matter that Jared and Michael Phelps and the Ravens all support Subway. Blue Cross does not. I thought that I was out buying a low-calorie, healthy sandwich, and they wouldn't even spring for a $5 charge. <laughs> and the worst part of it was they called Carroll County Public Schools and told my wife that I was out eating on the town again and that I couldn't use my card to charge a sub. Really great, huh? Well, it's something you get used to. But it really didn't matter because I was overdrawn on all the other cards anyway. So why not spread the blessings around? Okay, I don't know if I told you that the daughter that works for me got married here not too terribly long ago. Yeah. We took 45 people down to the Dominican Republic and the wedding was on the beach. And between the sun in my eyes and the nerves in the pit of my stomach. I almost escorted her into the sea, <laughs> as opposed to taking her up to where the minister was. You've heard him say tonight that the economy is a little rough, and it really is. The economy is so rough that she had to change her bridal registry. She had put down Neiman Marcus and Macy's, and she changed it to Sunoco and Exxon. <laughs> They got enough gas cards to last for six months. 
provided the price stays down. I'm not sure how they did on their wedding night, but I guess I should tell you about mine. You know how it is. Yeah, you've been there. You know how it is on after the vows are over and dinner and quietness and all that, and you go back. One of us got a little nervous. Threw up all over the place. Now, I think you will agree that if you spent your wedding night watching your own reflection in the toilet bowl, then you spent your wedding night in the wrong place looking down at the wrong face. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, too. <laughs> Actually, I woke up the next morning and I redid my vows. I said to myself, I won't get that drunk again. I won't, I promise, I do, I do, I do. And ever since, I've been doing. Well, you know, here in, in a restaurant, I want you to be very careful. Because I was, went down to Ocean City here several years ago, and I went into this restaurant, and I ate breakfast. And there I was sitting on the chair, and the back leg of the chair broke. And there I was laying flat on my back with both arms and one leg up in the air. And one leg trapped beyond underneath me. I looked like a small beach whale. And that was before I had finished the pancakes. And you know, the 17-year-old waitress came running over and she said, Sir, would you like some CPR? I said, yeah. <laughs> You know, that girl did CPR for two and a half minutes. <laughs> it might have lasted longer, but I couldn't hold my breath anymore. <laughs> oh, well. Look, while you're in here, sit in the middle of the chairs and hold on tight. Because I don't want you to go into another restaurant. And when you see Mike's place, I don't want you to get your restaurant the way that I got mine. Oh, well. Here we are at page number four, just in case you're taking notes here. No, that's three. I wanted you to know that tonight is, is kind of a special night. This is my second time up here, and this has always been a dream of mine. Thank you. I would have said that myself, but I'm just about out of voice. And my arm's broken, so I can't clap. All right, tonight is, is kind of a dream, I guess. And with me, dreams stay around a long time. <laughs> when I was 49, I gave up on the idea of being a Hollywood leading man. <laughs> I took a look in the mirror and I decided that I looked more like an Alfa Romeo than I did like Cesar Romero. <laughs> time to give up. At age 50, I decided that it was time to give up my dream of pitching a no-hitter, a shutout. I went to fantasy camp, and, the, and one of the coaches asked, who would like to take the mound? And I said, well, I don't know where I'm going with it, but I'll take it. <laughs> I won't tell you how many people I walked, but you know, they typically take pitchers off the mound at the sixth or the seventh or the eighth inning, or when they hit 100 pitches, I racked up 102 pitches with two out in the first. <laughs> I won't say that my ERA was high, but the national debt is low in comparison. <laughs> but you know what? I did manage to get some goose eggs on the scoreboard. Yeah, that was my batting average. Zero, zero, zero. I proved that great pitchers can't hit. And then the other side is, great hitters can't pitch. The last thing that I want to tell you about is my giving up my career as a competitive swimmer. <laughs> yeah. I was at Freedom Swim Club performing there one day, and I was in the adult nude co-ed relay. <laughs> now that happens to be my favorite sport. And in the lane next to me was a 35-year-old blonde. 
and she was doing the backstroke. <laughs> and in my lane, I was doing the butterfly. Well, I got disqualified. <laughs> they called me out for tailgating and lane changing. <laughs> All right, look, I've enjoyed being with you tonight, and I want to share one thought. Yeah, well, what can I say? I'm told that a lot of, that I invoke a lot of swearing among people. And you know that could be true. But by the end of the day, if I have more people swearing by me than I have swearing at me, I've had a damn good day. Thank you. <laughs>